just about to, to go through the motions of cleaning it now and I'll explain to you the, the equipment I'm using and the reasons why I choose to clean my rifle. Once you've used a phosphor bronze brush, what you'll need to do after that is, is patch it out with the patches and the solvent until the, the patches come out clean, uh, which is what I'm gonna, gonna do now. So it's the same procedure. Put the patch onto your rod, put the solvent onto the patch, and again with the ball guide in place. Right, the, as you can see, the, the patches that are on the table, the ones on the left are where we first started. So the darker one, I mean, there's only five, but the darker one is the first one that went through after we've been firing the rifle down the range, uh, progressively to the lighter coloured ones, which is when we finished and switched over to the phosphor bonds brush. You'll then see that the, the patches start off again from being dark, progressively getting lighter as the battle becomes cleaner. We, we're nearly finished now, in all fairness, so, the next step that I'll do, once the patches start to come out looking like they're clean, I'll change, and instead of just pushing the patch straight through the barrel, I'll tend to scrub it back and forth because I know there's nothing in there in the way or any fouling that's going to obscure me. Right, the, the, the reason for changing the style of, uh, of cleaning it with the rod, instead of pushing it clean through, and what I've done is gone on, a, on a, like a jerky back and forth motion. At this stage, in all intensive purposes, the rifle is clean. The fouling's been took out, the copper's been took out, and I'm happy for the patch to go back and forth. But initially, when you start, please just push the patch clean out the barrel. Uh, the final stage for me, once the patches are coming out clear, is to, to completely degrease the barrel with some form of degreasing solution that it evaporates away really quick. Um, and it'll just be two, two patches pushed through the barrel. And what that does realistically is, is take out any of, any of the remaining solvent. Um, and it's the final procedure that I'll do for me to be happy that the bore is clean. Uh, I only do it with two patches, in, in all fairness. One is probably enough, but me being me, I use two. The final stage, um, once the bore's clean, is to use these, these two little things. One cleans the, the actual chamber, which has got a little wool mop on. Uh, and this little product that has these little uh, sort of wads of felt that, that, that are gripped by the rod. Once the bore guide's removed, you just locate that through and it's cleaning where the bolt would run. And if you just pull it back slightly, then that felt face is now on the, the, the back of the barrel. And just rotate it. And just give it a general, general scrub in that area, really. Rotate it round. by the colour of the rod now, what it's picked up. It's brought out quite a lot of, of uh, some solvent realistically, but a, a, a lot of dirt and debris. The final procedure is just to get the, the wool mop, push it home in, in, right into the chamber and just rotate it. The last thing to do really, the, the, the rifle's been, the bore's been cleaned and degreased, is if you've got a threaded barrel, just clean the debris out of the thread, as you can see, which is a mixture of solvent and the rifle actually being fired. Make sure your crowning's clean, and if the camera can get a close-up of that, you'll see where the solvent was dripping out before, 
and how it is now. All right, at that stage now, realistically, the board of the rifle is clean. There's a little bit of maintenance to do on the bolt. I use a, either the a brush that comes with the cleaning rods or any old toothbrush will do, really. But if you just make sure there's no grease, no debris, no bits of brass that are stuck in the bolt face or at the back of the mechanism on the bolt, keep it nice and clean. And then just on the back of the lugs, if you apply a tiny amount of grease, and it is a tiny amount of grease. Grease is a good thing and a bad thing because it unfortunately attracts grit. And then replace the bolt. Just operated a couple of times, which has now spread the grease across the bolt face. And once the, once the silencer is replaced, the board of that rifle is now clean. Okay, now you, you've, you've seen me uh, go through the process of cleaning the bore of a rifle and its chamber. I'm now going to try and explain in a little bit more detail the reasons why you, you need to clean the chamber and the bore of your rifle. This is quite an odd thing that uh, I'll give people some sort of perspective. It's a rifle that's been cut and it's cut in such a way it enables you to see the trigger mechanism, the inside of the bolt, the battle rifling and a bullet that's in position, so it, it's, everything's cutting off, it shows the workings and what will happen when you pull that trigger and that firing pin hits that primer, obviously it ignites the powder, the bullet's released and it travels down the battle and out. Why it's doing that, which is a little section of battle that's cut in half, and if you look close you will be able to see that there's, there's a distinct copper colour within the rifling. That's actually a 270 bullet that you can see the rifling on. Obviously when, that, when you fire the rifle and that bullet travels down the barrel, the bullet is spinning, created by the rifling. So it leaves grooves on the bullet and the bullet leaves copper, i.e. fouling, with inside the, the grooves of the, of the rifling. Uh, this is a, another example. That's a 22 250 barrel that's been cut in half lengthways. When that rifle went into the cabinet, it would do sub half inch groups. It was left with an unoiled barrel in, if you wish, a, 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 an old, old style farmhouse that had obviously got a damp environment. When the rifle was removed from the cabinet, you would have been lucky to hit a two foot square piece of wood. And all that's through is the rust and the pitting that's in this barrel. And even with a close camera work, you will struggle to see it. But I can assure you the rifle went from being very accurate to absolutely useless. One of the final things to do with your rifle after you've fired it, you, you will see this is a different rifle and for obvious reasons. Uh, after you've used it, if you're one of them people who stores it with the silencer on, then I would suggest you don't. This rifle is empty, but if the camera can get a close up at the end of that barrel, you will see that the, it's rusted, pitted, it's been eaten away, and it's very, very close to the, to the crowning of the rifle. And in the end, this, the accuracy of this rifle will just be non-existent. Two things will happen, you'll either end up having to have the battle shortened or the gun rebarreled. And that's purely through leaving the silencer on. The gases are quite corrosive. Over time, if you left it and left it and left it, you wouldn't be able to screw the silencer off. Uh, it would just weld itself to the barrel. There's the reason for taking the silencer off and cleaning your gun. Okay, the rifle's all clean and done now. Silencer's been put back on. So I'm going to carry on on the range for a while, put a couple of shots through it, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. Subscribe to Team Wild TV for all the best hunting shows on YouTube.